Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my top 10 least favourite ciders list for reviews 451 to 550. If you've not seen my previous top 10 favourite ciders list um, on the video prior to this, go and check that out because I give all the uh, details of what this uh, top 10 is all about. But today, in this video, I am counting down the, well, my least favourite ciders that I've had for the past 100 reviews. Um, and there are some proper stinkers in here, and there's a, probably going to be a couple of surprises on this list as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting list. But uh, unlike the favourite ciders list, it was quite easy to work this one out. Mainly because, well, I tend to not rate ciders as low because I don't generally go out and buy a cider that I know I'm that not going to like because that's just foolish really um so yeah as as with the uh, favorite ciders list there is a couple of stipulations uh one no ciders from any beer or cider festivals but well covid struck so i haven't been to any so that's null and void and one cider per producer otherwise this would probably just be full of like cider pops through and through but don't get me wrong, there are cider pops on this list, but it's not completely dominated by it. And you'll see when we uh, get round to trying it. Uh, but before then, a couple of, well, a dishonorable mention, I suppose. I have to sort of mention it, but um, Elska Cider has to be mentioned. Some of their range is genuinely good. It's actually nice and refreshing. Yes, it is a cider pop, but I would get them over like Crapperberg and stuff like that any day of the week. But then you have others like their um, uh, spice, I think it was uh, like their spice pear and grapefruit or something like that. Just, I don't know, they have so many flavors, it's hard to know which one is which. But some of them are better than others for sure. So it's a bit of a lucky dip when you go into the Elska range as to if it's going to be nice or not. So just bear that in mind. Um, Aldi have them for very, very cheap. I think it's normally like one twenty nine a can or something like that. So you're not going to break the bank by trying them out. So it's not too bad. Have, have, having said that, though, they have just released 440ml cans and 500ml bottles. So the world's their oyster now, really. So uh, with that said, let's get cracking on with this list, shall we? And number 10 is probably my most disappointing cider that I've had recently. Um... Now, on my favourite ciders list, I uh, included a cider from Australia, which was sent to me from longtime viewer Ed Varga. And coincidentally, there is also another of the three ciders they sent, uh, sent to me on this list as well. Coming in at number 10, uh, by the way, we're starting off at the 4 out of 10s, so, you know, already way below average. But number 10 goes to Incy Wincy Cider Company with their Huntsman 2017 edition. Uh, I, yeah, I was just really disappointed in this cider, if I'm being honest. Um, I know Ed has tried it and he has really liked it, but man, I just could not get on with this cider at all. And it holds the record for being the strongest cider that I have featured on this channel, not including ice ciders or spirits or anything like that. This bad boy clocked in at 9.2% ABV. So you're getting into blooming like, you know, like pomo territory and stuff like that um or i like ice cider territory because they're about like 11 12 percent but i just tried it and it was just all alcohol it was just all about that strength and there was just no real discerning cider characteristics in this it was literally just a smack in the face saying yes i'm strong deal with me and i couldn't deal with it unfortunately there was some dryness to it but man that alcohol hits just completely ruined this one for me so it's a real shame because the labeling looks absolutely fantastic it looked the part and it sounded the part as well um but for me i don't know whether it was just a little gimmicky with it being really really strong um i mean i'm hoping that the rest of their range are a lot nicer i doubt i'll ever get around to actually trying any of them uh but yeah unfortunately you can't like them all so big you know sorry to ed varga for for that one but the other two ciders that he sent to me more than made up for that one so um you can't like them all can you so number 10 goes to incy wincy cider with their huntsman 2017 edition 
Now, number nine, the first of um, quite a few cider pops that are on this list, and it's one that sort of made my blood boil a little bit, and you'll know why when you uh, see what a cider, well, what cider pop it is. It was crafted and founded by, um, crafted by founders and twin brothers, Ben and Dan. It's Crane's Cider Company, and the number nine spot goes to their raspberries and pomegranates. Now, they market this as a better, healthier cider for you to try. I mean, at the top it says 30% fewer calories. Fewer calories than what? Fewer calories than a Big Mac? Fewer calories than a Doner Kebab? Who knows? They don't go into it. But they also say that it's got less sugar than the standard ciders that you get out there. But I did the calculations and it's still not that great for you. But not only that, but the cider itself, well, the cider pop itself wasn't exactly great either. Soon as I um, opened the can, I just got hit by sulfites, and I was like, yep, this is uh, gonna go down a treat, isn't it? And the flavor combination just didn't work out at all. There was something a little bit off about the flavors, uh, so <laughs> I don't know whether something went wrong in the canning process or something like that, but man, this did not taste nice at all. I know some people have said they've had this and they've really enjoyed it, and you know, fair play to you. You know, we all can't like everything, but for me personally, this just did not do it for me. And with a little bit, well, full, it's sort of false advertising really, isn't it? 30% fewer calories, but you still get calories in it. It's not like it's like these hard seltzers that have come out onto the market where there's like no calories in it. It is still, you know, not that great for you. But I suppose compared to Crapperberg, Maybe it is. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, number nine spot goes to Crane Cider with their raspberries and pomegranates. Definitely wouldn't recommend this. I only paid 69 pence for this can and it still felt ripped off. So, number eight, and uh, this is a cheapy supermarket cider, but it's not a cider pop. And it's also um, from a supermarket that I have featured before. And well, let's just say well, it's really weird. I'll show you what it is first. It is Co-op's Cider, but specifically in a can. Because you see, their 568ml bottle is different to their canned and their 2 litre plastic bottle cider. Why? I don't know. What I will say is, this one is nowhere near as bad as the bottled one was, but man, it still was not great. And when you read the ingredients that have gone into it, um, there was burnt sugar? Burnt sugar? Why would you put burnt sugar into a cider? Uh, but it turned out to be one of the most nondescript and blandest ciders that I have ever tried. Not, I mean, that doesn't mean that it's like bad tasting, but it was just so completely inoffensive and so you might as well just be drinking fizzy water that it wasn't even really worth giving a go. Um, I mean, I got it for reduced, but normally you can get four cans for £2.50. 50 pence for a cider? I mean, Warning bells are already starting to ring, aren't you? But to be fair, if you're going to buy this, you're not going to get it for the flavour, are you? You're going to get it to get drunk, but it's not even that strong. So I don't know, 5% ABV? Don't really know who it's sort of catering for. Maybe, you know, you can use it in cooking, I suppose, um, because it is, I suppose, inoffensive. And it got a 3 out of 10, so it's not undrinkable. But I definitely wouldn't rush out and buy another pack of these again. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's the number seven spot, I believe. No. Number eight spot goes to a co-op cider in a can. So number seven, here we are. Uh, well, I had to I had to do this at some point, didn't I? And with the recent trend of rosé ciders coming into the mix, all the big boys are starting to produce rosé ciders. And well, this is probably the biggest boy of them all. Uh, number seven goes to Strongbow Rosé. It was just sweetness. That was basically it. I've had a few rosé ciders before now, um, like Thatcher's, they were the first ones that I think introduced rosé ciders into the mix. I even did um, Aldi's like 99p rosé cider, and that was actually really nice. This one was just sweet. Just really, really sweet. And not only that, but it has carrot juice concentrate in it as like an added colour. If you need to add carrot concentrate into a cider to change its color, you're doing something wrong. Um, I only paid a pound for the bottle that I reviewed and I'm glad I didn't pay any more than it because I definitely would not pay any more than that for this. And the fact that they, they charge so much more than that normally is just a complete and utter ripoff. If you are intrigued by rosé ciders, 
don't start with this one. Start with like Thatcher's Rosé or something like that and move onwards from there. But I would say definitely avoid this. It's not terrible tasting, but carrot juice concentrate. Need I say any more? <laughs> um, so, so speaking of um, Aldi's, Aldi's range, it's uh, one of theirs that comes in next at number six. And I believe we're now getting into the uh, two out of 10 territories here. So this just shows you that we're starting to get worse and worse. And I mentioned in my favorite ciders list that elderflower infused ciders are a mixed bag. You, you have to be so careful that any wrong move can make it totally overpowering and undrinkable. Case in point, I have got Woodgate's Apple and Elderflower Craft Cider in at number six. Oh boy, this reminded me of uh, Mate's, I, Mate's Cider Company's Ida Elderflower Infused Cider. Just way too much on the Elderflower. Just too much. There was nothing else to it at all. It was like I just went into the perfume shop and just just went, right, where's a, where's a floral perfume? There we go. Spray it down my mouth. That's basically what I was getting from this uh, from this can. Um, yes, it was only 99 pence a can, but I would get more well more cans of their range to try than this one. It just did not work out for me at all. As I said, elderflower is a very fine, finely balanced thing to put into a cider, and this just did not work at all. So I would save your pennies, try out some more of their range because they are quite nice. Um, as I said, their rosé is actually a really nice cider but I would definitely give this one a miss. So number six goes to Woodgate's Apple and Elderflower. So halfway through the list, number five, and this is probably gonna be another surprise for you guys because well, it's one that you'd, one of the most bizarre ciders that I've, uh, that I've had and one that I didn't really expect to find because a few years ago, I took a trip to Kew Gardens with my wife just for a little wander around and we went to the shop and wouldn't you know it, they have a cider. And that is what number five, what the number five spot is. It is Kew Gardens Cider. Now I found that this is made by Wobblegate Cider Company and upon further review of their ciders and everything, it seems they're not that great at making ciders. Um, I know for a fact that this one has not been rated highly at all and probably for a good reason. This is quite possibly one of the driest ciders that I have ever reviewed. Border, so much so that it just made it completely undrinkable. I don't know whether Bramley Seedling just isn't a good cider apple variety to use in a cider or whether they just went completely overboard with it and they didn't actually balance it out at all. But it was literally the first sip. It was like I just, I don't know, I was walking through the Sahara Desert and just like, yeah, my mouth just instantly dried up and no other sips took that away. It was just so, so dry to the point of it being, well, basically undrinkable, almost. Um, I do believe this was a sink job because, I mean, I have, I love my dry ciders, don't get me wrong. Um, the russet apple is normally a quite a dry apple variety to put in. And um, I've had some russet apple variety, uh, single variety ciders there. They're really dry, but they're drinkable. There's a nice balance to it. This didn't have it. Totally not my sort of thing. Um, so yeah, number five spot goes to Wobblegate and Kew Gardens Cider. Definitely wouldn't try this, especially for the uh, price that I paid for it. I think it was just like over three quid for the bottle. So kind of got short change there, but there we go. Right, let's bring it back to, um, well, something that's probably gonna be a little bit more recognizable. And uh, the number four spot is definitely a recognizable cider brand out there. It's from Aston Manor Cider Company, the leaders of mediocre ciders, and it is their Knight's Cider. Now, I had it in a 330 ml bottle, not from a 440 ml can, thankfully, and I only paid like 79 pence for the 330 ml bottle. I wouldn't have paid any more for that, that's for sure. As you can see, it comes in a, at a nice, reasonable 8.4% ABV. And judging from the look of it, it's clearly a cider that you're just gonna buy to get drunk. You're not gonna buy it for the flavors, but what flavors? All I literally got was just chemicals and sugar and just cloying thickness, syrupy textures. You know the deal with these sorts of things, but the thing that gets me is that there are other ciders for this price out there and they are so much better than this like p 
pile of trash. Um, yeah, this, and I've seen other people review this as well, and they gave the exact same rating, like two out of tens and things like that. Uh, this is just one of those ciders that you just see probably people drinking on a park bench late at night or something like that, and they're just doing it to get absolutely wasted. Um, Oh, Matt, I'd, I'd save your money on this if you do see it. Uh, 79 pence for that 330 mob, mob bottle, and I still feel like I got ripped off with it. So just totally not a good drinking cider. So yeah, just keep keep away from um, Night Cider with their 2 out of 10, Aston Manor. I mean, you know, leaders of mediocre ciders, let's say no more. So we're getting into the, I think this is the fourth one. Uh, no, this is the number three, and we're into the one out of tens. Yeah, these, we're now getting into the really awful stuff that I have tried. And the fact that this, this picture is the best quality picture I could get from this says it all, really. It's uh, a su another supermarket uh, cider, and it's a cider pop through and through. It's Asda's, and it's their rhubarb and ginger cider pop. Now, the, the low quality of this picture just says it all, really. Um, wow. I mean, I've had some rhubarb few ciders before. I've had some rhubarb cider pops, and they've been fine. You know, rhubarb's generally quite a common flavour that gets added into ciders. But, my God, what rhubarb they used in this, I really don't know. It tasted off. It was like I just, like, picked up some rhubarb from a trash can and started eating it. And not only that, you get this really fiery ginger undertone to it as well. And it just made it totally unpleasant and undrinkable. I just, honestly, I don't know if something had just gone wrong into the, in the production process and everything. I'd love to know who actually makes these cider pops for Asda. It doesn't say on the bottle, but you're doing something wrong. Really, really are. Um, yeah, totally, totally not worth the two pounds I think it was £2.10 I paid for the bottle. Oh, God, no, do not pay that for this. Definitely not. I mean, I think there was like a pineapple and passion fruit one as well, which sounds probably a little bit better, but the flavour combinations here just did not work. And yeah, it just tasted mouldy enough. There's no other way to describe it. So yeah, number three goes to Asda's Rhubarb and Ginger Cider Pop. Don't buy it at all. Now, number two, um, yeah. I mean, this is on the lower end of the one out of 10s now. And this is a cider company I've not featured for a long, long while. And I can kind of see why I stopped reviewing them because this was just absolutely disgusting. We're with Brothers Cider Company and it is their Palmer Violet Cider. Need I say any more? Why in the hell would you think adding Palmer Violet flavouring into a cider would be a good thing? I mean, sort of a little bit biased in this because I can't stand Palmer Violet flavoured sweets anyway, but even if you do, you're not going to enjoy this at all. Just, it just doesn't work. It just, it just does. Not only that, but it's coupled with one of the thickest, most syrupy, sugar-ridden bodies that I have ever reviewed really. This is probably one of the worst examples of adding sugar and syrup and stuff into the mix. Um, because, I mean, way back when, Brothers Pay you could get, but they also had a little vat by the side of it with their flavoured syrups that you could add in. So you know full well that nothing natural has gone into this at all. I just absolutely boggles my mind. I mean, I'm sure there are some people out there that do enjoy this cider, and as I said, it's fair play, you know, one person's worst is another person's best, but I just don't get it at all. And the worst part is I've got about three other varieties of their cider pops that I've got to try. Um, I think I only pay, I didn't pay much for this 330ml bottle, I think it was just like 69p, something like that from b and I was like, Go on, how bad can it be? Oh yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. So yeah, best avoid this one at all costs. Uh, number two spot goes to Brothers with their Palmer Violet Cider Pop. And let me just say that they are sitting firmly at the bottom of my cider producers list with, I think it's an average rating of 1.66. So yeah, not looking good for Brothers, is it? But that's only number two. The absolute cream of the crap, as I like to call it, um, 
Well, I mean, again, this was a really easy choice for me. Uh, like the number one was for my favourite ciders list. I knew when I made this list, this was easily just going to go to number one because, wow, this is probably one of the worst drinks that I have ever tried. And I have tried some really bad drinks on this channel before. Um, and it's one that's been going for decades. And, well, I don't know... <laughs> I don't think it's as popular now, but the number one spot goes to Lambrini. Whew. Oh, oh no. Why was this so popular in like the late 80s, early 90s? I don't know. Is it still popular today? I don't really see many people buying it. I mean, the one that the bottle that I got had been sitting on the on the shop shelf for a good few I want to say years, um, and when I tried it, there was actually little bits floating in it, and I'm thinking, is this still safe to drink? I'm not sure. I got it massively discounted as well. A seven, I think it was like a six sixty ml bottle or something like that, and I got it for one pound thirty nine. Um, but I've had some bad ciders before that when I've tasted it, they've nearly made me throw up. This has the honour of being the only drink that I've only sniffed and it's nearly made me throw up. That's how bad this drink was. Um, it actually scared me to actually take a sip of it. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely abhorrent and I just do not see how people can drink this stuff. Maybe you mix it in with stuff? I don't know, but on its own, it's a rough ride, that's for sure. And the fact that like a 750ml bottle normally goes for something like £2.50 or even less. Um, it's one of those ones that you probably are just going to buy to get drunk again because it's like 7.5% ABV. But then I feel that now with all these inclusions of like, you know, wine spritzers and, you know, things like that, Lambrini has definitely decreased in popularity, at least around my area anyway. And probably for a good reason as well because... It's just disgusting. And I said, one of the worst drinks that I've ever tried. I don't even want to call it a Perry because it's a disgrace to the Perry style. It really is. Um, so, yeah, there you go. The number one spot easily went to Lambrini. And with that, that's my top 10 least favourite ciders list for another period. So, until then, as I've already said, I've recently hit 2,000 subscribers. And so... I have a very special cider plan for the next one. It is Beard and Sabres Congol the Blind. So please join me on my next review. But until then, I'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye for now.